I rejoice in the occasion that brings us together, the celebration of the centennial of this school. And I think we all owe a vote of thanks, which we can express quietly and privately in our own hearts, to, of all people, Abbott Lawrence Lowell. <laughs> he is not the natural poster child for this community these days. <laughs> I understand that, but I appreciate the greatness and goodness of his vision, which made it possible for us to celebrate 100 years of this remarkable institution. So, oh, Mr. Lowell, wherever you are, God bless you, for you have given us all gainful employment and, <laughs> and something not only useful, but of which we can be very proud that we do. Now, my association with uh, University Extension goes back a long way, and I'd like to say, I'd like to think that it was grounded in high idealistic motivation, but it wasn't. <laughs> I learned that instructors in University Extension were paid and since I was inadequately paid uh, by the powers that be that engaged me in the work I still presently enjoy, <laughs> every extra compensatory dollar helped. <laughs> Michael Schenegel was not above dangling such inducements <laughs> in front of people like me. And I was not at all bashful in accepting his invitation to teach in University Extension. Now, all I knew about University Extension at that time was that they were among the loudest degree recipients at commencement, <laughs> which usually was a source of annoyance to me. When the uh, degree candidates for Extension were announced, they were usually out by Leviton Person Square seemingly miles away, but they made up with the intense volume for their distance from the ceremonial center of things. I had no idea really what to expect when I entered my Tuesday evening 7.30 p.m. course on the history of Christian thought from St. Paul to St. Augustine. A rather heady thing was the only thing I knew anything about. <laughs> Teach what you know, they say, so that's what I did. <laughs> and the room was full of a very odd assortment of people. I could have set my classroom up in the Central Square subway station. <laughs> the audience could not have been more uh, diverse. But I was impressed over the course of time that these hard-working souls would put in a full day's work and had many things to juggle, were quite prepared to do all the reading, ask intelligent questions, write decent papers, and always were prepared for more work. They wore me out. <laughs> I was used to Harvard undergraduates. <laughs> You know where a little charm and a lot of BS gets you? <laughs> Way down the road. But not in extension. These people had come and they were going to get their money's worth. <laughs> and it was stimulating. I taught another course. This is where I began my, what I hope is now famous, but I certainly think it's a good course, my History of Harvard course. And that was an interesting experience. I wasn't sure I dared yet offer it in the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. I mean, who would allow me to teach a course for credit on the history of Harvard? That was then, this is now. But I tried it out in extension. And I asked the various people, again, a, a, a wonderfully variegated assortment of souls, well, why are you taking this course? And some man who could have picked me up and thrown me across the room if it was his will to do so, stood up and he said, uh, I'm a token taker in the Central Square subway station. I said, okay, we're gonna get this long sociology lecture. 
And he said, I've always hated Harvard. <laughs> and then he said, and I'm taking your course to find out why. <laughs> well, I rather like that man. We got on very well over the course of that term. Now, my classes met on Tuesday evening in Siva Hall from 7.30 to 9.30, and that's a lot of work. Uh, I thought I had worked hard during the day doing my other academic duties, but you had to rouse yourself by 7.30 to begin, and you went without stopping until half past nine. And it was hard, but good work. And I must say, on balance over the years, in both of these courses, I found my extension students intellectually stimulating, provocative, and alive. They made teaching fun. This is what I thought it was all about. And here there were grandmothers knitting away, people <laughs> stroking away. It was all a very strange lot, but they listened. And if I repeated myself or apparently uh, made a mistake, they were quite quick to correct me. <laughs> so I knew that they were into the stuff. And it was and remains a joy. And I must say, I've heard this from many of my colleagues who have said they enjoy their extension students because the extension students invest in the course. All a teacher wants is for a student to invest in the work. Not even necessarily do the work, but invest, <laughs> invest in the work, lead you to believe that they think it is as important as you think it is. And extension is the gratifying place where that invariably happened. And so I was always thrilled, not only because I welcomed the extra money, which I did, but because I welcome the intense experience of teaching people who wanted to be taught and who were willing to go more than halfway to do what it took to make the time and the experience worthwhile. I knew Dean Phelps from long ago. You see, I am much older than I appear to. <laughs> now I've been around quite a while. But my great friend and colleague, Dean Schnagel, and I have been up to much mischief over many years together. And anything he runs, runs well. We owe not only Mr. Lowell a vote of thanks, but we owe Dean Schnagel a vote of thanks. For he has created the modern university extension. And I rather think that, uh, although President Lowell might have problems with both of us, he, <laughs> for quite different reasons, quite different reasons, he would be very proud of Mike's administration, <laughs> of what his idea and what the Lowell family germ has become. It is really quite an extraordinary thing. And to see many, many senior members, at least of the faculty that I know best, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, here, and knowing that they too have had the same teaching experience that I have had teaching in extension, suggests to me that I'm not the only person in on the great secret of university extension. Harvard is not often thought of as a populist or democratic or even meritocratic place. And that's why so many of us like it. And we know it will stay that way. But university extension is interesting because it is the great exception to everything we are perceived to be. And I think that's the genius of Mr. Lowell and the genius of his successors and our predecessors and our colleagues. This is not what you would expect to find here, a place devoted to the people, to spreading 
all our great treasures abroad as widely and as well as possible without regard to previous educational attainments or ability to pay. These are extraordinary gifts which this university has learned to share. And I hope it is a lesson that we continue to learn and that we will always place at the center of our enterprise the great and good work of university extension. It seems to be indeed that our cheers are rightly loud and vigorous on commencement day when the degrees in university extension are confirmed. Now I hope that you will remember that next commencement uh, as I certainly will. These people have worked so hard, they have been well taught, and they will go on to do great and good things in the world. And it began here with a modest hope that others might share in the great wealth of our great university. So it is a privilege for me to have this opportunity to thank Dean Schnegel and by implication, President Lowell and everybody else for the privilege of being involved in this great thing. And it is also my happy duty now to bring these proceedings to a close. After I have said my prayer, I believe you're supposed to stand up, we are supposed to leave, and I believe there is a festivity, eating and drinking out there somewhere. <laughs> uh, if I am wrong, somebody will tell you. But uh, I think that's what I have been told. So. I'm going to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for this institution, for its past and its present and its future. Let us pray. O oh God of all ages and of all places and of all time, we give you thanks for this remarkable institution, for those who envisioned it, for those who have cared for it, and for those who take its benefit. And, O oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for this present moment in which we celebrate this remarkable achievement. We commend to you, gracious God, our future, that this school and this program may be always nourished by high ideals and distinguished achievement, and that you who are at the center of every good and worthy enterprise will remain at the center of this great school, that we will always have reason to be grateful to you for what we have learned, what we teach, and what we do in this place. In the name of all that is good and holy and gracious, we say amen and thanks be to God.